Welcome to the Lodge. You've accessed the Lodge Cast Experience. Enjoy. Welcome to the very first pilot flagship episode of the Lodge Cast. We are sitting here in the Lodge Master's Matt Mobile in a parking ramp outside of the Burbank 16 on a rainy day. No better time to start. What this is going to be is we're going to watch movies that you might not get to because they either look too painful or they look like a waste of time. <laughs> and uh, we're going to take that hit for you and give it to you straight. I'm sure there's going to be a rotating cast of characters, but the OG team is David Bischke. And good, good morning. Good good afternoon. <laughs> and Lucas Tanner. Good morning. Uh, Brother Bischke and Brother Tanner, uh, we all have very uh, specific tastes. And I think as we tackle these films, those tastes are going to come to the forefront and we're going to have some clashes. We're going to have some agreements. But in the end, it's all about love and it's all about service to the Lodge. Yes. So, as I take out uh, the marijuana that Lucas and I will smoke, Bishki and I, Bishki probably won't. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the sober one. He's gonna going be, in I'll, after the movie. I will smoke. He's, he's gonna get a contact high, maybe. He's yeah. gonna be the control, um, the control in this, group in, in this experiment. Um, but Lucas and I function best uh, on a from a critical standpoint when we are a little uh, chonged. Yes, I'm. I'm just for the record half a join in already before I came. Just to which is great, which is, which shows the dedication. Yeah. Uh, so, Bishki, do you have another little uh, addendum to this? Yes. First of all, I just wanted to say this movie, this Lodge Cast is presented by Movie Pass. Lodgers, <laughs> if you haven't got your Movie Pass yet, it's now apparently seven ninety five. You have to pay it all at once up front. This is a new thing. Go to www.moviepass.com slash that's it. Just go there. <laughs> Just go there. Get your movie pass. You can join in on the Lodge Cast Lodgers, and uh, it's we got it at the nine. I got it. At the, I'm in the nine ninety five a Me month, too. and Me I uh, yeah, and I'm seeing movies more than I ever have in my life in the theaters. AB, AMC, Burbank, eight, six, sixteen, all of them. So get your movie pass. Yeah, if you don't have a movie pass yet, and you're in the Lodge. Um, your membership may be revoked at any time. We reserve that right. And I do want to mention, just just to give you a flavoring, Matt and I have been seeing some movies over the last few years, and uh, that that you know, there's good movies, there's great movies, there's there's uh, you know, the Shape of Water, there's all these. Sorts we're of great we're not going to go to the good movies. Yeah, we're not going to go to the, and they're not, and we're not going to go necessarily. I, I call them the other movies. The, they're <laughs> not they're not necessarily the bad or the worst. The worst. But some of them are. But um, <laughs> but I'll give you some highlights from last year. Uh, uh, we saw Lost in London live that was with Woody like. Harrelson. That was so good. that was positive. That yeah. was actually something I would have liked to entice many people to see eventually. Yeah, it actually was a pleasant surprise. It was a Fathom event, which is Fathom event. We're gonna see a lot of Fathom events, I think. Um, we're gonna we're, uh, we saw 9/11 on 9/11, starring Charlie Sheen, Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, <laughs> Gina Gershon that and happened. Louis Guzman. <laughs> that happened. And if you can take it, it's actually I, th I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, and then I think the highlight of my year last year was seeing Girls Trip hmm. at the Cinemark Baldwin Hills. And we sh we should have had a recorder in the theater because it was it was a singular event. It was mo the most ruckus, uh, enjoyable movie going experience I've, I've almost ever had uh but what was, about the 1517 to paris yep we saw that a few weeks ago and that that has actually is a nice segue because that was going to be our first lodge cast but lucas his gag reflex is a little more tender uh and nubile than ours <laughs> so i defy anyone to see it alone in a theater like 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 just straight through. I mean, that's impossible. It, yeah. it was very rough, but um, that it, is the type of movie that we will be seeing. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, Lucas very well may be falling asleep forcibly or walking out of. I still contend that the worst film and the most painful that I've felt devastated was 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 Mother's Day. Gary Marshall's Mother's Day. Gary Marshall's is, Mother's Day oh is the we. <laughs> 
That was the out moment. of this very theater, Bishki oh. and I walked out yeah. after Mother's Day, oh. and we hugged each other for <laughs> yeah. a long time, and we said to each other, that might have been too far. Yeah. That yeah. might have been too far. That hurt. Yeah. That hit bedrock. No. It uh, took me days to recover it, from Me too. Mother's I felt Day. sick. Yeah. I felt yeah. upset at the very state yeah. of films. So anyway, yeah. that's a great recap. Um <laughs> And that's those are the kind of films that you'll be seeing going forward, because to be honest, like most of you aren't going to go to those. You you aren't going to take the time. Mm. You aren't going to wade through the mire. Mm-mm. Yeah, that's for us. But you're free to join. The more excited you get, because we're excited about these films. I'm excited about the film we have today, which is A Wrinkle in Time, directed by <laughs> Ava DuVernay, starring uh, Oprah Winfrey. Reese Witherspoon, Chris Pine, and uh, Mindy Kaling, Zach Galifianakis. There's a lot of surprises in there. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we got maybe another Cloud Atlas on our hands. That's what I'm hoping for. I think the Galifianakis angle might take this into Cloud Atlas territory. I'm yeah. I'm a little worried. I don't. I'm not usually worried going into movies. I'm not usually scared. But the trailer for this, I can barely look at it. I it. <laughs> It looks like a feature-length version of the extremely screensavery 90s visuals from The Lovely Bones, and I'm scared. I was going to say Siegfried and Roy. It has a little of that, like, Vegas. Sure. Vegas There's yeah. a little show, Vegas show, razzle-dazzle. Show, show, show I'm looking real. forward to the New Age message. That's mostly what I want to take away from it. I, I'm guessing there's a New Age message if Oprah's leading it but i really don't know what to expect yeah. uh i'm gonna smoke way more of this weed i think that will prepare me uh but again i don't know this is unknown to me um i'm i've lost complete touch with the uh books that it was based on i don't remember a damn thing Okay. So yeah. I'm going the, in kind the of book, fresh. The book's been floating around, and I even saw a photo recently of a young Steven Spielberg reading the book or had the book on his desk uh, when he was do, doing uh, Jaws. So this is wow, it's been pro- floating around that this long. This property okay. has definitely been chewed around for for a long, long time. So to see where it finally lands and comes to life will be very, uh, very interesting indeed. Okay. Well, without further ado, I think I think that's going to be the general format of this show, as it were. We're going to smoke. We're going to give our early first blush opinions and then there'll be some sort of magical transition and we will have been weathered <laughs> by the experience on the other end. God bless you Lodge. God bless you Lodge. God bless. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. We just got wrinkled. Crinkled. We got wrinkled and crinkled, y'all. We got tessered. Uh, there's been a request for more weed, even from Bishki. Cat. Okay. Um, cat, I'm going to hit it. <laughs> must must hit it after that. That, that was definitely uh, a journey. So it goes without saying, there's going to be some spoilers. If you, uh, if you care to see it, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to see this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, how do we how do we begin this? I, I don't want to I don't want to belabor the plot too much, especially since what the fuck even happened. But yeah, can I give? A, I'll try to give a plot summary. I think you should go for it. Okay. Uh, there's a girl. Wait, it's based on a book. It's based on a sure, book. Based sure. on a book by Madeline La Engel. Anyway, there's a girl. She. Um, uh, <laughs> Already belabored too much. Okay. She's she, trying to find her dad. Her dad's trying a to, scientist. Her Chris dad's a scientist. He got a little too far into quantum physics. Like, honey, he, I vaporized myself. He got wrinkled. She's, <laughs> she's got to go in the wrinkle with her brother. He's got a little precocious brother. Uh, Reese shows up. 
magically, and then Mindy Kaling shows up magically, and then Oprah shows up very large and magic. The, the, got the Godhead. Oprah is definitely the Godhead. When I, as I was watching it, the Oprah and the ladies are kind of these mystical beings that come and guide them. And when Oprah showed up, uh, she's the size of a house. And I Literally. lost it. Literally, I yeah. lo- I was like disproportionately large to the other characters. I was on punching screen. these gentlemen. I yeah. couldn't take it. It yeah. was like if the Statue of Liberty came to life and it was hanging out with you. And I think connected to some of her Weight Watchers promotion. I think her first line is, "Is it, like someone's like you're the wrong size," and then she's like, "Is there a correct size?" Yeah, or something yeah. like that. A lot of body imagery politics going on in here. Yeah, I felt bad for the the bully. The girl who lived next door was the bully because she was skinny, and then later it's revealed through the the eye of truth that she's got like an eating disorder. And you know, I, I or at figured, least she's like, on a she's putting like herself he, through a diet. She looks at her wall and it says no carbs. I feel like the actress was like probably <laughs> really dealing with one. You know, it was like okay, so yeah. we're we're coming at you from all angles. Yeah, I pre- yeah. I, I understand that and appreciate it's the first that. one. But, here, but here's what here's what I'll say: the very minimum. 90% of directing a good movie is casting the right appropriate lead. And in this case, I felt from top to bottom, from Chris Pine as the dad to the young girl as the, the heroine or, or the protagonist to her little brother, to Mindy Kaling to, yes, you know, even uh, Oprah, herself. Oprah herself was just so miscast because it was so clear that... Uh, that I mean, I feel like the the young girl really she had so much heavy lifting to do, yes. and, and the young boy, and you didn't yeah. really know how she was feeling until she verbalized it because her facial expressions and her and her and her body. I mean, it was just it was just flat. Like it was really like Judy Garland. She was not. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, it was very tough. nice. It was well, tough. here's the thing. I felt like this was if Michael Bay were a woman, it's bombastic, but there's not a lot behind it. Like, all the dialogue is exposition, pretty much. Yeah, it's a lot, like, a lot this of is where we got to go. A lot of this is where we got to say. And the way they travel through time is through this tesseract, and they say tessering. So there's another thing where they're always like, we tessered through time. We tessered. We tessered. Did you tesser? It was glorious. Did you, and you're a good tesser. You're, yeah. you're good at tessering. Oh, I'm no good at tessering. You will be someday. And there's so much, like, coming-of-age stuff that I couldn't help but think of a weird, like, like your first orgasm or something. It was very strange for me because they're just like, oh, did you tess her? Oh, I tess her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Very odd. Yeah, I mean, in terms of it being a kid-friendly movie, I mean, what are the kids going to think I, of this? It's lot, not for there's kids. A, there's, there's a lot of crying in the theater. I could hear some kids. Yeah. It's, not for a, major, it's definitely not issues. for adults. Sh- it's a lot of screaming no. and, and hysteronics uh, with the protagonist. <laughs> there's and, absolutely no toy line and, and, that can come and out of this. there's some weird, there's some something weird about Oprah saying to, to, to the girl, we're going to find your father. Like, we're going to find well, your She dad. was saying for some while, she was saying our and, father. And, like, it's every well, And, you know, a lot of kids, you know, might, might you know, definitely feel uh, that on another level, you know. Not not that their dad was vaporized, but that he just, sure. that he just bounced. <laughs> right. Uh, also, to, to stick with Oprah, words can't express what, what Oprah in the first, in her first two major scenes, how that looks. Yeah. It looks like some sort of anime, like and you get some brand extreme oh, close Oprah up. Made anime. Movie, Oprah yeah. made this movie two weeks after everyone else wrapped. She was yeah. like, that, she that's was, what I'm getting she, to. She, yeah, she, she was, like, seems a like a disembodied reminder of your video game objective, because yeah. that's all she's she's disconnected from everybody else by necessity because she's on a giant <laughs> she's bigger. She's bigger. Yeah, and she shot and separately. Disconnected life lessons thrown in by her. Yep. And and a lot of new age platitudes thrown in, and a lot of it just ADR. Like they'll cut away, and you'll hear somebody say a platitude. Like yeah, yeah. There was a platitude punch up. There had to have been. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 But Oprah, giant Oprah, just looking benevolently over the proceedings, like the like the baby son in Teletubbies, is something to be seen. Yeah. yeah. I especially, hope, especially when they're riding the Reese Witherspoon salad dragon. Reese yeah, Witherspoon salad, <laughs> the salad dragon man. Salad dragon was a it was, that a, was a high peak. point. That was yeah, a peak. That was a high Reese point. They never really got to that hiding in. They no. when the, they all tesser into this onto this planet. Which is very colorful. It's actually the only colorful time in the movie. Everything's yeah. really dark. Everybody thinks... And they go to the it, which we'll get to. But. Right, right, right. So they tesser, 
they test her gloriously into this planet and they're just looking around it it seems like everybody's on drugs and they're like they're like run around explore and then reese witherspoon turns into this giant like salad literally like a piece of like lettuce her face looks like a salad yeah and the kids get on her back and they just go flying around this kind of like and knockoff was, avatar. And there was no dressing puns. You expected at least like one. Nobody or two, says salad. No one, Nobody no, says no, shit. No one takes a no, bite yeah. of it. Like there's, there's she just, no. She yeah. just turns into it. Yeah, there was like, no. Oh, she's a salad. Yeah, there's no salad and joke. And that's that's like the drug thing. It's like every everybody just is on the same page. Yeah. Which makes you feel like we weren't nearly fucked up enough. Yeah. No. To be on this level. No. And they're all talking about being on the same frequency. See, like you got to. Like you gotta, find, saying, you gotta find your frequency. You gotta be like, as high as yeah. us to understand. Yeah, this. yeah. Like, and you don't have to travel anywhere in space or time. It's all in your mind. So it's yeah. it's a trip movie for children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they like take too much Ritalin or something, yeah. like they might be on the same page. Yeah. But it is. But the movie fundamentally doesn't work in the sense that the whole story is this journey for this girl to get her dad back. Yeah. But really, she doesn't need her dad because they established that her mom and her precocious younger brother, like all the support system that she really needs, like I didn't see the need for her to find him. No, they were getting along just Especially, fine. Especially, yeah. yeah, since they had they had this really great relationship. And, and then it kind of ties into the climax, which I literally was falling asleep during. I was trying to stay sure. awake. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Because the kid that... that Plays the younger brother. Has, he doesn't have the right he's, gravitas. He's too young. It's too. He's, he's too way young. too young. I don't think any kid that age could have been asked to do what this kid did, and he did it well. And I can only imagine uh, the the acting coach or whoever was giving him the line readings and how to say, you know, I want you to say it this way. I want you to say it that way because he had a lot. Because the kid becomes the, the kid, villain. The kid turns evil just out of nowhere. Yeah, which which I think is a bold move. Like I was expecting a super villain inside of the. So anyway, so after they're after they get to the the beautiful land, when they're flying on salad what salad, salad. dragon, when they're flying on Sal- salad Reese, Reese Witherspoon's salad dragon, they encounter it, which is basically the embodiment of Trump's brain, <laughs> like an it, it's an internal neuronal structure yeah. of Trump's brain that the that is pure darkness, and the light needs to conquer this, yes. or and and somehow. Um, uh, uh, our, the dad has entered Trump's brain yeah. and is trapped there. He's just brooding. He's just like he's brooding, sitting, sitting alone. He's doing, brooding in a Yonarovsky meets he, he, Drake hotline bling room. Yes, he's exactly. Literally yes. just sitting there and there's there's and, no explanation. And then the, just, three, the three muses just bone out. They're like, see ya. Yeah. And then they're gone for the second half of the movie. And, and the little boy, Charles Wallace... Uh, Christopher Wallace? Charles Wallace. I kept turning it into Biggie. (laughs) Biggie is Christopher Wallace. Charles Wallace, they say his, his... his name every so, fi- every five yeah. so that's the drinking game yeah anyway he turns evil kind of on a dime he's just evil then and he doesn't have the gravitas of say like a gauge from pet cemetery where no, you really no, no, believe no. that there's evil afoot no. yeah he is definitely just parroting uh line read like he's good at reading the lines but yeah, there's give- not you got to bring acting to it but, but, yeah. but dramatically it doesn't work because she, we already know she loves her brother. We established sure. that in the beginning. Yeah. So it's yeah. not like whatever she's telling him is revelatory or enough to change him or make him good again. Right. It's like, okay. And so like, then you're left with the it, which is basically just a big tree or something that's... Yeah, uh, I thought for uh, sure uh, they'd find her neighbor in that in that weird, yeah. dark, trump yeah. mind hive. But, yeah. but no, they didn't tie it in at all. Then they tried to pay that off at the end in this epilogue. There was, like, there, was, uh, there was kind of an incredible... The epilogue is 20 minutes long. Incredible sequence with children bouncing... The only <laughs> the only part where I actually perked up, like actually was into it, was when they enter this dystopic uh, suburbia where all these little kids are bouncing four square balls in unison, and I'm like, holy shit, that's cool. Yeah, that's fine. that was that was pretty creepy. Yeah, that's it, like it, it a had, minute. It had of the time. Stepford Wives, yeah, like Edward yeah, Scissorhands, I didn't know what... Tableau, and it, it was very effective. I mean, there needed to be a lot more they, of that Twilight Zone something type of shit. Yeah. That was the other problem, actually, because come think of it, the problem in the beginning is Ava DuVray didn't shoot <laughs> the the fantasy land any different than the reality of Earth. Sure. So so when when you're in Earth, and then all of a sudden you're meeting one of the witches or misses or whatever they're called. Like Mindy Kaling's little library house, 
it's it's like it's seamless. The transition's seamless. Like sure. there's no contrast. So sure. it kind of like it's again, weird. Like dramatically, like the kids that's, aren't reacting to it. It's just kind of like oh, this that's is how it's when, always been. When like, Reese is, Witherspoon shows up in up. their living room, yeah, it they're feels all understanding. Up. Yeah, no, yeah, reality, yeah, yeah. There was no magical entrance. It was just Reese in the Reese living room. Oh yeah, up. that's when you know you're in. You, yeah. you just walked into a minefield. Because yeah. I will say, for the first three to five minutes, I was like, wow, this is actually you know pretty dramatic, pretty sure. heavy. They're sure. just setting it up. I'm digging. And then all of a sudden, they walk. Into the living where room, where Reese shows and up, and there's Reese where there's not magically not, just not, there. looking like a like a Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, you know, yeah. character. Here's, and, and it was yeah. just like, whoa, okay, it's already over. You Here's just my other already feeling: ripped and the tablecloth off. I don't know if you guys can get on my frequency with this because it's not a, f- it, it's kind of a, a hazy pot fueled thought. But to me, what it feels like is imagine there's a girl that lives in Beverly Hills somewhere rich. She comes up with a story that all, like, her mom and all her mom's friends and all her friends think is really cool. So for her birthday, they all decide to dress up and have, like, a theme party based on her idea. Yeah. That's what this movie feels like. And we're left out of this kind of inside, not joke, but inside tale that yeah. everybody seems to get and be on the same, wa- same wavelength for. Yeah, yeah. But we're just like, What? Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, we're not on the same frequency. Yeah, the and, stakes are not high. It, it, it's, it's just the world. It's the the rules aren't established. It's and, the rule. And there's no. The, <laughs> and at the end, when Oprah's like, "You did it, and you restored hope, and everyone's gonna be safe again," it's like, from what though? Like, you didn't establish anything. Like, yeah, it was just love and light meets well, Trump. Like his dad, her girls. dad, her dad should not have just accidentally vaporized himself. Her dad should have been taken by someone the dad you know, real. Should, the dad and, should have and, been left. With Oprah, I think. For a sad... <laughs> for a sad... I like, mean, a con, you, like a yeah, contact. Yeah. Like, here, like a contact. Like, you know, he's safe. He's with Oprah. But he's... Because yeah. the dad coming back, there's like... There's so many reunions at the end. It, and the it, music it, it ends for so long. goes over and over the music and then... It thinks it deserves a way bigger ending than it does. Yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, Basically, all she learns is to wave hi to this girl that was mean to her at school, which is a good lesson. <laughs> but uh, that is kind of it. Yeah, but that's about. That, that is true, though. You're, it's you're not about wrong. the that's extent pr- to her transformation. Um, so, a couple things we didn't touch on. Uh, Mindy Kaling's character only speaks in quotes. Yeah, she Ooh, quotes. Uh, is, let me leave that it down. Khalil that is Gibran. A thankless role. Khalil Gibran, the Buddha, Shakespeare, Chris Tucker, Chris Tucker. She goes and she'll attribute uh, the name and nationality to all her quotes. So she, yeah, so, one, so, so she'll Winston go Churchill, British, uh, Khalil Gibran, Lebanese, or uh, she'll go, dang, Tucker, American. <laughs> That's a line. That's a line. Yeah. And then I think her last line is something from Hamilton because she's like Miranda America. Oh yeah, some people got that. I'm that was over my head. But, right. Because okay. we can't afford Hamilton. Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Uh and then Zach Galifianakis. Oh who, yeah. The the movie kind of just dwells in some scenes like seemingly five minutes longer than yeah, they they're in to. like a floating lava world with Galifianakis. They're in Ga- Galifianakis' <laughs> floating lava cave. And there's another point where uh, they've been going through some dark worlds, and Oprah goes in there, and she's like, finally, some color. Which has a couple meanings, too, because the cast is very, almost almost perversely diverse. Yeah, um, definitely. With the whitest kid, like, love the, interest you've ever seen. With I the mean, whitest you love interest. Like, you look like a bimbo, like, which, uh, which is like why logo. You already have the whitest man, Chris Pine... Like as as the father figure, yeah. Why why have that kid? Because that kid I did not get. He yeah. looks like he's drugged out up a little bit. Yeah. His eyelids are. I think he's trying to look smoldering, yeah. but his eyelids are just kind of woozily fluttering like around. Doctor Seuss character. And he seemed like he was like a stalker of the girl. Like it was a creepy vibe I got from him. And then he had, and then he, they gave him this like really sad backstory where his like you know high powered attorney father is <laughs> like dad? yelling at him for getting a B minus, <laughs> for getting B's, for getting yeah, a B yeah. minus. And then at the end of the movie, he's like, I gotta go talk to my dad yeah. about some things. You know, I had to go like, across the galaxy. To, and like, the guy's so creepy. It's like, are it's you like, gonna no, go dude, kill him, dude? Seriously, like, I would be like, don't talk to your dad, man. You should just stay with them because your dad's gonna fucking strangle I, you when you yeah. get home. Yeah. Well, I took it to mean like 
I'm going to go talk to him. Like, I'm going to go talk a bullet through his head. Yeah. Because like, he thought, has thought, those I weird thought, well, I woozy thought, eyes. I thought it was him going to be like, I'm going to stand up for myself only for his dad just to, like, take him out. Like, it yeah. just didn't seem safe at all. Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, in terms of the visuals, I, I, I think cinematography, I mean, you're dealing with $100 million here. Sure. So we get we got some nice. Some uh, of the green screen was a little spotty, but some yeah. of it was a little CD-ROM, especially when Oprah's giant and telling you what your goal is. Yeah. On yeah. repeat. Oh no! When they get on the salad dragon and they're taking off, they go by the Oprah Statue of Liberty, and the girl puts her hand out. She touches, and touches her. Oprah's cheek. Like, grazes like, her like, cheek. Oh, that was like, great. That was great. Like, yeah. She's surfing then we a got, wave. And we got to scale like giant Oprah. Oh, that was so. That big. was the high point for yeah. me. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. No, it peaks early in the first um, act. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and there's a couple music videos kind of built in, and I think a new Sade song, which kind of piqued my interest north toward the end. I'm like, oh, Sade, back on the scene. Um, but that's neither here nor there when it comes to the entire movie. I'm checking if it's Sade, but that's okay. It, no, no, it's. Okay. I would stake my okay. life on it. I think the girl who sang "Rise Up" uh, in Selma also has a song. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, so, um, Andra, but you know, here, here's what I'll say. There's an interesting kernel of an idea about a girl in search of her father and she has to use her, her mind magic melding Terra sacking skills to find him. Tessering. I just, I just wish, yeah, that there, there was more of a, of a plot with a sense of urgency, you know, where the it or nothing, or whatever you want to call it that's bad. It, it was just more, I don't know, specific or... Yeah, like you, Kate Blanchett was, needed to show up and be evil or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, yeah, we then, maybe needed a more powerful or maybe, villain. Or maybe then. Oprah Winfrey could have played both, you know? Yeah. She oh, played, I would have liked yeah. that. Yeah. Evil Oprah? A, a, yes. a mo-cap evil. version, you know, yes. like that, Yeah, bad a, a twisted version of Oprah. Yeah, yes. that would have... Even bigger? And the bad yeah. misses, they're called widows <laughs> or something, you know? The widow, yeah. Yeah. So... Um, <sighs> rating wise, are we gonna go bones in yeah, order? Bones, of the house? Bones, yeah, bones, 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 man. Okay. Um, I guess I'll kick it off. I, I mean, I am not. None of us are the target audience. No. Uh, no. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I may. I guess. I guess teenagers would be the target audience. I guess no. The target audience is is, is like tw- tweens, ten to twelve, whose fathers yeah. have left them. And gr- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would say for me. Being generous, trying to keep all that in mind, two bones. Okay. I I got to give it one bone. Okay. Just because it just total misfire. I mean, you really had to to just make make a, a simple hero's journey story. I feel, and make it exciting. And here there is no there is no structure or journey that I can tell. It really and, is kind of and, rudderless, and, and it is kind of flat and not very exciting. And and, and things just happen and happen and happen, <clears throat> and then it's over. And then it's like, well, what happened? You know, it's like she told her brother she loved him, and she found her dad just sitting in the hallway. Like, I mean, that's not a movie. That's that's, that's a bone. That's a bone. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll give it um, two bones as well. I'll give it an extra bone. I'll give it a half bone for some of the visuals, okay. and another half bone for uh, some of the new age elements that I was looking for that it, that it, that it, that it delivered on. Sure, because Oprah is, you know, it, it brought in some, you know, some of that. She deep, was definitely very mindful to get some some of that some Deepak Chopra, yeah. some yoga poses were were involved, and yep. I, I just that needs to get out there, you know. So I'm proud. Yeah, I'm proud that New Age got represented on such a large budget such a massive scale yeah all right boys well that's the first lodge cast uh we we picked a doozy yeah, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was but like, when i saw that reese witherspoon salad dragon i knew we were at the right film yeah i know that i'm was like definitely this is it like, yes. fuck yeah. this is the one and they don't even yeah. explain it they don't even nope, they, they don't, don't need e- they don't no. even say not like one oh, word is mentioned <laughs> who doesn't not. love salad it's good for you they don't need to they don't need salad to. makes you fly that's right uh, well, excellent, excellent work, gentlemen, and uh, we hope you, brothers and sisters in the lodge, will glean something from this. Um, if, if only just to uh, drop in on our on the sparkling conversation we would have had anyway. So uh, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep going out there for you, martyring for you, seeing yeah. these films. So L- light, that, light and love to the full lodge. See you at the next lodge. Light and love to to the entire lodge and. Um, 
we'll catch you next time. The Lodge Cast. Peace. Peace.